Welcome back, channel. Thank you for coming back, fellas. We are uh, we're talking about poopy pipe and machines today. We're heading over to this job right here where we're at in Northwest Park. Pretty large job site we've been talking about. And Second Street, which is also a rehab, they are mainly focusing on poopy pipe. So we're gonna get to check out how they're laying poopy pipe right down. I keep saying poopy pipe, but sanitary sewer pipe is a more technical term for everybody that's wondering. The cool thing about this is it's deeper. Yes, I say it's cool. Everything's gotta be a little bit safer. You're gonna see uh, shoring boxes, manhole shoring boxes, construction of manholes. So let's go check it out and uh, let us know if there's anything we missed on the machines while we're going over them and what we do with them and all that. Taking our sewer line, look, you see them new? Look here, we got a manhole, cut out that square, run straight down through here. As you guys can see, I don't know if you can see that all the way down there, but there's pink down the road. I'm standing where the new manhole is going to be, and we're going to be heading that way. Uh, they're working on Pine Street right now. Dude, let us know how the new audio is. We've got us a new mic, so hopefully you guys can hear me the whole time. One of the babies. So today, what we're going to do today, a little different style of video. We have been coming at you guys all about what we do, who we are, try and give you an idea of what we do on the daily. So what we're going to do in the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about every piece of equipment that we keep passing by. I keep just walking by and not explaining anything. Definitely going to start explaining a little bit of what tools we use, why we use them. And uh, from what we can tell, you guys really like knowing about track hoes and dozers and stuff. So let's keep it going. Oh, of course, of course it's idling. Shout out. Here, let me go ahead. Ah, oh, there we go. Save that fuel, you know. This is a next gen 308 Caterpillar, 308D for Delta. Um, rubber tracks. This is, ooh, I don't have a spec sheet on me. Here, let me pull specs. I pulled some specs for you guys, so I'm not sitting here giving you half information. This is a, basically a 58 horsepower model. The operating weight, 17,306 pounds. Fuel capacity is about 33 gallons. This little machine is a utility godsend. And the biggest thing about this machine, why we all use them, is right here. Is this articulated boom? Yes, sir. Thank God it does look like that. That means the boys are doing their job and there's plenty of grease. It'll get pressure washed off there once it gets back to the shop. But while it's been working, it's been greasing. But essentially what this knuckle does is it places the boom out in front of the cab rather than back in here beside the cab. So what it does is that boom with one of the switches in there on your joystick, it essentially, the machine stays, but your boom can angle within retrospect of one way or the other. So if the guys are sitting here along a ditch and they need to dig on you know this side, but the boom needs to be a little bit straighter than just reaching over there and caving off this whole side, we can articulate that boom. That's why you see so many 308s, you know, basically on a utility crew, they're so handy for services, hydrants, stuff like that, mainlining. I mean, this machine puts pipe in the ground all the time, uh, especially water pipe, four foot deep. You can, you can rock and roll with this thing. It's got plenty of power. Tell them, come on. This is what a 308 cab looks like from operator view. There's that skid steer button I was talking about. There's that thumb wheel that basically articulates the boom one way or the other. And as you can see, it's out in front of you. But if you articulate that boom one way or this way, we can essentially dig a lot straighter from one position, one cab position, right? Blade is here. We've got our nice buttons there. Toggle switches for your lights, uh, sound, wipers. Uh, this runs your menu. Let me do this so you guys can actually see it. I wanted to do this so you guys see how many hours is on the machine. We have, hey, it wasn't too bad off. 1787 this little wheel right here right next to your hand one of the coolest features about it controls everything you want on this you can see i'm turning turning this up everything right here is at the operator's control where he can just come off of here switch that and do anything he wants on that menu anyways wanted to give you guys give you guys a good look of the 308 i'm going to go ahead and set the bucket down and the blade down so ocean man doesn't get us
Shout out to Zeus down there. Shoot, we need to get this lady out of here, boys. Ma'am, are you needing to exit? No, not an issue. We'll get some gravel right here and we'll get you out. Give us just a second. He's slow, huh? The 138 is a zero tail swing rubber track machine, just like I've shown you guys on the 308. She is our next step up from that 308 that basically we can run right down the middle of the road. We're using her for her exact application right now. This is running right down the middle of the road. Put that existing gas, gas line scared to piss out of me. I still got it, okay? This right here is the best piece of equipment on this job site. It's called Sharp Shooter. Whew! Like I was saying, guys, I'm sorry. I had to help him spot around whatever that existing service was. This 138 is doing his exact application as necessary. It's got rubber tracks on it. I'm sorry, rubber pads as tracks. So basically, we can run right down the middle of the road with here, let me pull some specs up. So the 308 was essentially a 55 horse, 60 horse machine. This is going to be 97.2 horsepower at an operating 2000 RPMs. The weight that this machine weighs is about 36,547 pounds. Bucket capacity is anywhere from about uh, basically a quarter yard to a full yard. About a four foot bucket's about all we can put on it. We've got the utility blade is what they, they essentially call it. It's made for guys like us that are running down the ditch, need a little bit of push work here and there. Can't bring a dozer into this application, right? The 138 kind of serves so many purposes. She's got, a, she's got a big bucket on her, moving lots of material directly into dump trucks. We only got to touch that material one time, drag our box, set a new stick, backfill it, do it again. And these guys are slaying it here. We're gonna leave them alone and probably venture over to Northwest Park. If you guys have any questions about 308, 138, drop it in the comments below. my baby. This is a Komatsu PC 210 LC. They obviously have an iMachine version of this. Not yet, but I could see the use for the iMachine version of this machine. Our iMachine version of the dozer we own, not quite yet. Um, and we can go into the various differences between an iMachine and a standard machine without the integrated machine control in it. If you want to, we can do a totally separate video because it can go completely crazy with details and diagnostics of such. But the PC210LC we bought with the 138 you guys just saw and the wheel loader I'm fixing to show you guys. We bought them all three at one time. We partnered with Power Equipment. As you guys seen uh, when we were out in Con Expo, we did a publication with them and, and some interview out there literally right next to a machine just like this in Las Vegas with Komatsu. Komatsu for us was a choice that we chose, me and Sarah as a team, number one, the number one thing for us was service. We had to have people that could service our machines and be there when these guys needed it. Um, this is the largest machine we have in our fleet that we currently own. This is, let me pull the specs. All right, PC210LC-11, coming in at operating weight, average of 52,000 pounds, approximately. Bucket capacity is anywhere from about a half a yard to a yard and a half. So this girl can basically move some earth when we need it um, and quickly. Obviously, the big, big sister of her, the PC360 is over at the airport. We're running almost three yards, three freaking cubic yards, three times the bucket size on this machine is on the 360 loading trucks out. So the biggest feature I would say about the PC210 uh, for our guys every single day is that coupler right there. So this coupler right here, it allows us, as you can tell, the bucket's not facing the machine right now. It's actually facing backwards or 
in this case, forwards. Um, essentially, this machine is going to turn around, grab a scoop of the gravel, grab a scoop of gravel, spin back around, and be able to perfectly see from the operator view and see his spotter down downstream of him, watching his hand and control the bucket, and leaves less work for your guy in the ditch, right? But this thing right here is by far the most crucial part of this machine. We have this big hook back here. So this hook completely swivels all the way around. So that way when we're picking up this rigging on this trench box or we're picking up anything, uh, basically the guys can spin it 360 degrees so it's safe for them to get it down in the hole and get it out of the hole. I didn't give you guys a view of the 138, but I'll give you a view of the 210. Thank you for keeping this thing clean too, boys. Thank you very much. All right, guys, this is our PC210. Got a rear view camera view there. One of the main, one of the reasons I really like Komatsu, everything is set up right here for the operator. Take his hand off again, come down here, click anything he needs. Um, very simplistic toggle switches. It's just your same looking controls like you normally would. Foot pedals control your tracks. And then we have a standard pedal that tracks straight, just straight this way, straight back, controls both tracks simultaneously, right? Of course, we didn't go without the air conditioning. By God, these guys down here in the south couldn't go without. Hey, there's Will. He's going to make it in the video. Give a shout out to this guy. Hit a thumbs up for this guy on those fire edits, bro. Anyways, guys, we just got the windows tinted. As you can kind of tell through here, that should hopefully help the boys stay cool this summer and hopefully help our filters. So... I have seen in the future us owning quite a few of these. This bad girl right here is the biggest bedding machine, pipe mover, I don't know what you want to call it. Essentially all this job duty is, is moving gravel to and from the ditch, moving spoil to and from the ditch, and ensuring that we got pipe sitting next to the ditch to go down in the ditch, right? So this is more of a support machine rather than bigger machine right so this has 126 128 horsepower gross nets 126 don't quite know the difference i'm not a mechanic basically coming in right at 25,000 pounds it's a pretty standard wheel loader across the nation whether it's komatsu cat um whatever it may be everybody's basically got a wheel loader on their job site sticking with the komatsu the wa 200 for a utility guy like myself hydraulic coupler on the front we can drop that bucket grab our forks, get pipe straight to our track hoe, and get it rolling, right? So it's that support roll. We've got gravel, 67 rock, and base on the other side of them. We're having to drag it all the way over here to our ditch, actually dumping it into the 210 right now with the turned around bucket, spinning around and getting it in the ditch. We couldn't do a whole lot without this girl going down a ditch every single day. Some pretty standard toggle lights. That's basically where all your AC, heat, Where's the radio in this one, boys? Of course they got the radio going. Let's kill that. But no, we've got backup view full time, all time, so they know what's going on behind them, this big beast. Obviously, the, the rest is pretty self-explanatory, but digital dash, we absolutely love this thing. It's been good to us. Let's see how many hours we got on her. 823, if anybody was guessing. 823 hours on this thing. I literally have zero complaints. Zero complaints about this machine is exactly what I wanted and doing exactly what I wanted it to do. So, yeah. Thank you so much guys for watching. Talking a little bit about poopy pot and how poop moves downhill, literally. Obviously we got in depth about the machines. Let us know if there's some more in depth and details you want me to go on there. We will definitely go a lot more in depth and have solo videos of those, of those machines moving forward. Drop that like on this video if this content was something made you watch it all the way through it or there was a couple of clips in there you like, drop that like button. Subscribe, drop us a comment, let us know what you guys want to see, okay? And if you made it all the way to the end of the video here, type good, good in the comments below. 
and uh, we'll be doing some type of giveaway for you guys that keep trucking all the way to the end of the video and can drop in the comment of what we need driving what dropping a comment of what we tell you to drop it, it, it pays to play so guys thank you so much also let us know about as you guys could see, I had a, I was wearing a lapel mic today. We've been using this mic uh, for various, obviously up until the, up till now. Should be a little bit more crystal clear on what I'm saying and what I'm doing. It may be a little too hot. Bear with us as we're trying to figure that out. Trying to make sure we, we're getting crispy audio, crispy footage for you guys, and trying to improve the game. GoPro is finally here. GoPro footage coming at you very, very quickly. Hopefully maybe a whole day time lapse of the guys. Cool stuff's coming, guys. I appreciate you so much. Drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and drop us a comment, and we'll see you on the next one. Deuces. Ka-chow!